the scripture reading this morning, and I want to just focus there, especially verse 11 and 12. But you have to understand this, President, follow along with me, because I'm reading from the New King James Version. He said, and now behold, the Lord has kept me alive, as he said, these 45 years, ever since the Lord spoke this word to Moses while Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now, here I am this day, 85 years old, yet I am as strong this day as on the day that Moses sent me, just as my strength was. Then so now is my strength for war, both for going out and for coming in. Mm -hmm. So now therefore, give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day. For you heard in that day how the Anakin were there, and there the city were great and fortified. It may be that the Lord will be with me, and I shall be able to give them, to drive them out, as the Lord said. And Joshua blessed him and gave it heaven to Caleb, the son of Jephthah, as an inheritance. Let us pray. Loving Lord and Father, in the name of Jesus I come. Asking you, Lord, that your sweet divine spirit will come now and speak to your people. Amen. Dear Lord, I ask for the holy anointing. That I, it will not be my word, but it will be thy word. Lord, remove self from me now and take over and have thine own way. Lord, may your people be blessed and be drawn closer to you now, I ask. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. One thing you need to realize and understand in all of this, that Joshua realized that, look, God has kept him, and he recognized that the first responsibility is to give God the praise. That God has kept him for 40 years wandering in that wilderness. And above it all, it's a miracle that he had not lose his strength because he's just as vibrant and as strong as that day as he was now at 85. So we need to realize whenever men accomplish anything, whether in spiritual or in temporal line, he or she should bear in mind that he does it through cooperation with his maker. There is a great necessity for us to realize our dependence on God. Too much confidence is placed in man, too much reliance on human invention. There is too much little confidence in the power which God stands ready to give. And it's so often that we tend to realize and put our trust in man, what man can do for you, and we don't realize that behind it all is the power of the Almighty God. Amen. God, the one, God is the one that gives you power to achieve great wealth. God is the one that gives you power to achieve a good education. But sad to say, as soon as we achieve these things, we forget our maker. And then we start to praise ourselves. Yes. But Joshua realized that, wait a minute, all this ends upon the Almighty God. Because he's the one brought them out of Egypt. He's the one carrying them through the wilderness journey, and he recognized that the Almighty God still stands and give him that strength. Amen. We are co-laborers together with God. Mm -hmm. First Corinthians 3 9 said, For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. Mm -hmm. We are co-laborers together with God if we link with divinity. And with the divinity of Christ, we can do all things through Christ that strengthen us. Christ impart to Joshua, and Joshua understand that it's God. That's why Joshua could say, And now, behold, the Lord has kept him alive. He knows that he was not based upon his skill and what he eats or what he did not eat. 
Today we tend to think that, you know, my strength and my health based on what you eat. But I'm here to tell you, you can eat the best of what you want and all the vegetarian you want to be. That does not give you the strength without God. Amen. Amen. But brethren, today we tend to think that these things give us all. It is wrong. I'm not saying you don't do it, but the ultimate purpose must give God the praise. Amen. And unless you recognize that God is leading your life, God is guiding you, my brother, my sister, don't this thing don't mean nothing. And Joshua realized that. And that's why he said, ever since that day, he understand that God is the one that kept him alive. And not only that, now here he is, 85 years old. And as yet I am as strong this day as I was then. Do you realize that? Yeah. That sometimes in your life, whether what age you are, you realize that God has blessed you with that strength. Oh, yes. Yes. God has given you good health. Do you appreciate that? Did you give God thanks for that? Amen. Did you use that health to serve God? Yeah. Or just to serve yourself? Sad to say, look at the look at service today, it is full. What we get here this morning at 9.50, there's only four of us. What happened? Show your first, I, I, think about it, just for a second, that's it. my first allegiance is to God. Because yeah. God has kept me alive. Do you realize God has kept you alive for the six days of toil and labor? You get up and you go to work and you make a living and you come back home. This is the Sabbath. Do you come with all the blessing in your heart? Say, Lord, thank you for preserving me. You have kept me safe on the road. You have kept me safe through the week. Now I can come fresh in the morning to give you thanks. Amen. But you need to start realizing these things that will take for granted because the God of heaven and earth still rule in the fields of men. Amen. We are quick to give men all the honor and all the glory and don't realize that God comes first. Yes, yes. Our first allegiance is to God. That's right. oh, yes. And we have to understand. That's why Joshua could say when he went, I mean Caleb when he went to Joshua, the first thing Caleb can say, he acknowledged that God has kept him alive. And not only kept him alive, but God has kept him strong. Because he has not fought, he has not lose his strength. Because God has been with him in his going out and his coming in, both for war. Understand this. Because in the ash of the environment, living out in the wilderness for 40 years, the element can wear on you. But he realized it was not about him. It was about God. Amen. God is saying the same to you and I. He said, here in West Palm Beach, we have much soul to win for Christ. And it is time to get busy. Isaiah 57 and verse 15 said, For thus said the high and lofty one who inhabit eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him who has a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite one. God is always willing to bring his people together, but the problem is God's people tell our time to be exalted. When we need to show him humility. The first thing Caleb showed his humility and his appreciation for what God has done for him. Because he realized God was the one kept the man going. Because he realized along the way. Those that he called labor with were no longer there. Because they died in the wilderness. But he's still going on with full strength. So give that a praise to God that God was the one that he did. You see, it was when Moses was hidden in the cliff of the rock that he behold the glory of God. It is when we hid in the ravine of the rock that Christ will cover us with his own pierced hand. And he will share with us what the Lord will is. And said to us, as to Moses, God will reveal his, God will reveal himself to us as merciful, gracious, long-suffering, abundant in goodness and in truth, keeping mercy to thousands and forgiving iniquity 
and the transgression and sin. See, because God so loved that he gave, and he continued to give. Well, then the problem is God bless you and me. But it, so often you realize that the more God blesses, it seems like the further we get away from God. And the less we want to do for God. You take office in the church and say, I want to serve. But as soon as you take that office, you forget what the responsibility is. Because now it becomes all about you. What about God? When God going to take first place in your life? Joshua, understand when Joshua was called, he take that. When that mantle was passed from, Joshua, from Moses to Joshua, he take that. And the first thing he said, if as for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. What about you? Caleb, understand that. Because understand something. Over all that leave Egypt, at the age where Joshua and Caleb were, they were the only two that entered to the promised land. Do you ever understand why? Because they stand faithful to God. Brethren, today the same is back in the church of God. Because we all started, I was sad to say, along the way, you can see where your priority lies. Because now it's all about you. God is secondary. My brother, my sister, I'm here to tell you, God must take first place in your life. Amen. 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 It is time that we put our priority right and realize that God has called you at a time like this. In Proverbs 3 6, in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Are you ready for God to direct your path? Then, my brother, my sister, you have to surrender all to God. God won't to be your leader if you would let him. What is your mountain? What is your mountain to the brother and my sister? We all have a mountain. We all have a mountain. But you have to first acknowledge what your mountain is. Put it before God and he will deliver you. He will remove it. But you have to acknowledge it. Your mountain could be financial. Your mountain could be a struggle that you have within your family. God knows what that mountain is, but you must bring it first to him. Amen. Caleb understand what that mountain was, and he put it before God. Because right there we have to understand that just as Caleb acknowledged and realized what his mountain was, and he realized that God is his leader would be able to move that mountain, and he made that request. <clears throat> See, God is ready to move the mountain that is in your life. But you must acknowledge it and give it to him like Caleb. There in chapter 14 and verse 12. Let's look at it for a minute. I'm going to read that to you. But I understand something here. How powerful that Caleb went back to Joshua and made this request. Because understand the first thing God, the children of Israel, when they entered the border of Canaan, Moses said to go and enter the land. But before they said, no, we need to send spies to spy out the land. Look what happened. They sent 12 spies. Because it was 12 tribes. So a spy for every tribe. So in other words, they can bring back a fear report. Yeah. Understand it. All of all that, they all come back. And only two bring back a fear report. Yeah. And they come back with, with fruit and show how much the land was fruitful. But they come back and bring back false reports. But Caleb and Joshua stand and say, no, the land is fruitful. The land is good. We can conquer. But the rest said, no, we can't. And bring such fear in the heart of God's people that people start to rebel. But because of the rebellion, again, verse 1, he said, Now therefore give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day, for you heard in that day how the Anakim were there, and that the city were great, 
and fortified. It may be that God will be with me and I shall be able to drive them out. Understand. So, first thing, Caleb recognized that the giants were there. He realized that the city was fortified. This is the same city. This is the same mountain. This is the same people that the spy bring back forth the poor and bring the discouragement to the heart of God's people. I'm here to tell you today, we have to be careful what you say among God's people because sometimes you bring discouragement and bring division among God's people. Amen. Know what you are saying unless you are led by the Spirit of God. Yeah. The best to close your mouth. Yeah. But you understand something, even though the people bring, Caleb has to wander in the wilderness for 40 years. Even though people are going to Because something has to suffer yeah. the evil that people bring. Yeah. Because when the Lord brings judgment on the land, even though you do right, you have to suffer that. So we have to understand, Caleb's faith now was just what it was when his testimony had confronted with the evil report of the spies. He had believed God's promise that he would, and he put his trust in the God of heaven and earth. Today, my brother, my sister, we have to put our trust in God because he's still the same yesterday to the revelation. We change not, but the problem is yes, we see the mountain and immediately we start to quiver. But the mountain, my brother, my sister, God can remove that mountain. Amen. There's no mountain too great for God that he can ever remove. Amen. But so often we look at the mountain and we see it as a problem. And we forget that the God of heaven and earth still rules in the affairs of men. We have to be the Caleb of today. But sad to say, my brother, my sister, too often we look at the problem and don't look at the problem solver. Amen. We still have that great problem solver who rule in the affairs. My brother, my sister, trust in the God of heaven and earth. Amen. It is sometimes discouraging to see the way God's people behave. Because every little thing we get discouraged, we get like the children of Israel. <laughs> Of every journey we make as one hardship come. We go to God's level. Oh, do you bring us out here to kill us? Every step of the way, you bring us here to kill us. Was there enough land in Egypt? Was not place to bury us? But forget that God always comes true. And my brother, my sister, we do the same today. As hardship come, we start to worry. How are we gonna get through? But God help us and we make it true. And we get to the next early and we start to complain the same thing. Yeah. We need to pray. Because the God of heaven, He just wants to put us to that test. To see how we're going to come true. You see, we have to understand here in Caleb's life, he realized above all that God has led him all the way. And not only just led him, but he has kept him strong. He has given the vigor that he needs and above all, give him a clear mind. See, he had endured with his people the long wandering in the wilderness, thus sharing the disappointment and burden of the guilty. Yet he made no complaint of this, but exalted the mercy of God. And that presented him in the world, that prevented, preserved him in the wilderness. When his brethren were cut off, Amid all the hardship, peril, and plagues of the desert, wandering, and during the years of wandering, since entering Canaan, the Lord has preserved him, and now at a good old age of 85, his vigor had unchanged, and he stands firm and still ready to do God's bidding. Can you imagine? At 85 years old, that Caleb realized there is still a mountain to be conquered. And he looked at all the other places in Canaan. He could have go to Joshua and say, Look, give me here this area which has already been conquered. Easy. But he looked at the hardest place, the mountain, where the spy bring back the bad report and said, Look, we cannot conquer these people. We are like grasshopper before them. Yes, 
but Caleb now at 85 years old, out of all the other places, he said, give me this mountain. Amen. Give me this mountain. And he asked for this mountain not to be right or to be boastful or to show up, but he did it in a way to show that God is still in God's world and that God would give him deliverance. My brother, my sister, we are in a world today, yes, we worry about everything around us. And, but we forget that the God of heaven and earth still rules in the affairs of men. The problem is, we look at him right now. The man that's in the white house and say, oh, look what he's doing. My God, he's still able to do all things. But the problem is God, people don't pray now. Amen. 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 There's things happening in this world and you want to, why all this violence? But we forget, the Lord said war and rumors of war, violence. Disease, yeah. earthquake, in diverse places. Yeah. But he said, be not what? Be because I am with you, that's his word. Oh. But my brother, where is your faith? Amen. I'm here to tell you, there's a mountain, but you must have faith like Caleb. Amen. At 85, if we're 85, there's a man, I'm closer to the grave. So what? You don't know what God has in store for you. Live yeah. for him by faith. Amen. Do what you have to do. Yeah. Come to God and serve him. Serve his people. Yeah. God will preserve you. Amen. 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 Just to understand that. We have too much hang-ups. We need to let go and let God. Amen. Watch him move. You see, we have to understand something here. Though at 85, Caleb still realized that there's a work to be done. And this work is not easy, but this work can accomplish with God at the end. Amen. And Joshua realized that he put God first. Yeah. He did not do that to be boastful, but he wanted to show that God is still able. So he said, give me this land. But he put his trust and his confidence in the God of heaven and earth. Amen. Which above all others, the spy have bring that bad report. Here it is now, just kill them, ready to show that I am still able by God's grace to deliver and to drive these people out. He did it in a way to show that, look, the God who tells us to conquer Canaan and to drive it is still able to do it today. Even though I wandered for 40 years in the wilderness. Can you understand that? To realize that you are wandering for so long. And your faith does not give me some man, this is all. Now, I was 40 then. Here am I now. Actually, he was 45. And the 40 year one is now he's 85. And he said, but wait a minute. You say, well, now it's too hard for me. I can't do it. But this is what his faith is in God. And he realized that I still have that same strength and the same vigor. And he realized that now it's not by might or by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord. And he realized that if God said he will do something, he will. Amen. You know, sometimes what gets to me with God's people, we can quote the scripture. We can tell people all about the Bible and what the Lord said. But when it comes to number one, to apply to yourself, it's like you said, God never did it. God is real to everybody, but he's not real to me. So why speak? Joshua, Caleb is demonstrating that, look, the God that I talk about, he's a God that I believe in. I'm going to show you his word. So he was willing to step forward. Can you imagine? We all face the mountain. Could be a mountain of sickness. A mountain of bills. But do you trust God enough to remove it? Do you trust God enough to remove it? You see, you have to step out by faith. Caleb talks about it. But he acts on it. And he shows that it is doable. Because he moves forward. And Joshua pronounces blessing upon him as he gives him that mountain. Caleb did that to show the tribe that, look, it's not about me, but God's word is true. I'm here to tell you today. That God's word is true. And it's still rule. Believe in his word. It's not there by chance, but it's a reality. It was no desire for honor or aggrandizement, 
that prompted Caleb's request. He bore all the sorry, the old war warrior was desirous to give to the people as an example that what God said God would do. And he wanted to show that God is still able to deliver the people into his hand. Yes, there were giants. He recognized that. But he knows that the God of heaven and earth can remove giants. Amen. There is giant in the land today. But you want to tell me that God can remove them? The problem is because God's people don't speak. He said, before you speak, I will answer. He said, my ears is not too heavy that can I hear you. Neither is my hand too short that can I hear you. My brother, my sister, that's the God of heaven and earth. Why God's people refrain from crying out? Because God is eager to help his people. We have to come to a realization that God is always here to help his people. Because if we will stand and petition the throne of God, and as the world see your God move among his people, it will bring a warning to the people. But if we have to understand something, there at the plain of Dua, with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, there was only three in that vast throng of people. Stand before the king when the king made his announcement. To show the world that whatever the king said, it stands. But they stream it. Because they stand upon the word of God. Thou shalt not worship any graven image or any likeness of anything. They stand there to demonstrate that the God who they serve is still able. What about you and me today? When you go to the job and the boss said you're going to work on Sabbath. Do you say the God who I serve? who create six days for toil and labor, say rest on the Sabbath, I'm sorry I can't come. Do you trust enough in the God of the Lord? My job is if you're that person that will turn in. It's not in me, but in the God who I'm representing. Shout God, me, she's going to be able to stand firm. And the plain of Dura. The king was angry. But you see, they said, oh king, know this. Know this. We will not serve the image that you set up. Because our first allegiance is to the God of heaven and earth. Caleb did the same thing. He said, look, I remember. I bring back good report. But because of the other spy, you all seem to listen to them. But today, I am just as determined. And my faith has not failed. Because I believe in that God. What about you? Do you still say, I can remember that day when I come in my life in the water of the grave of baptism to the God of heaven and earth, my desire is to serve him. What happened along the way? Brother, to stand up, we stand up and be counted for Jesus Christ. Amen. We need to take a second look at our Christian walk with God. What causes us to be so reluctant in serving the God of heaven the way we act? God's people need to be serious about our relationship with God. But we need to get our priority right. Caleb did. And you all have ask yourself, really, what is your mountain? What is your struggle? And then you have to answer that whole question. Is this mountain too much for God? Caleb demonstrated that. It was real. The Anakite was there. There the giants. That caused Israel to quiver. And said, no, we cannot defeat these people. They are too much for us. Are you saying that today? The problem is too much. I can't overcome it. They said, then therefore you're putting a limit on God. He is limitless. His resources are beyond you can ever exhaust. Can you realize that? 
That's why he was willing to ask for that mountain because he knew God can subdue the giants of that land. I'm here to tell you today, God can subdue whatever mountain you're facing. He can deliver you, but you have to first get on your knees. Because your prayer is answered. Because we still have an ambassador that intercedes on your behalf. Yes. My brother, my sister, I'm here to tell you this morning to bring you that hope. Trust in God with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge Him and He. <laughs> God wants to direct your path. He's able. There in Hebrew chapter 11, verses 32 and onward, they tell you. It said, and what more shall I say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah, also of David and Samuel and the prophet, who through faith subdue kingdom, work righteousness, obtain promises, stop the mouth of lions, quench the violence of fire, escape the head of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, they became valiant in battle, turn the flight of armies of the alien. God is still able. As you look at Paul penned these words in the book of Hebrews, Tell you to look at the patriots of old. You can remember very vividly Gideon. Gideon was hiding in the wine press, trashing wheat. Yeah. You can say Gideon was a coward. Yeah. But God see a man differently. He said, Oh, man of father. Gideon says it. How could you call me a man of father? But God sees something because you know what? I understand the media that was there. Taking everything that the Israelite farmer would plant, and as soon as it comes to maturity, the Midianite would take it, leave them there. But Gideon realizes a spot I can hide in the wine press and trash my wheat, even though I know the enemies out there. God sent his angel to talk to call him mighty man of valor. He said, How can you? He said, But look, I have a job for you. I have a job for you. It is time for you because I see something in you. I need you to go and deliver Israel. Wow. What is God saying to you and me? God sees something in you. It is time, my brother, my sister, for us to be the Caleb and stand up. You know, even look on the picture. It's amazing that Paul will bring and paint these words because Barak, we understand Barak, when Deborah went to Barak and said, Barak, God wants to deliver. The Philistine in your hand. He said, no, I'm not going to go unless you go with me. The boy said, look, if you don't go, then you can't get You can't get the other. Realize I'm saying the same to you. God wants to do something. But brethren, my, my brother, my sister, we sit back and we'll move forward. See, God don't force. It is dear for us. And understand the whole story of Samson. Yes, God called he was a special bird. But yet, even along that, he did to walk away from his post. But God still has a duty in front of truth. My brother, my sister, what is your duty that God has called you to do? Don't neglect your responsibility. Take it seriously. I don't care what it is that the Lord called you to do in the church. Don't look at it any less. It is just as important. And Caleb didn't see that English because remember, his first response, God called him to go and spy out the land and he bring back a good report. And even though he suffered the consequence of the false report, for 40 years of wandering, he did not complain and murmur. Even though things may not go the way that you anticipate the church, don't complain and murmur, but step up to the plate and address the issue and make it right. 
Because God is ready to move. But God's people must understand what that mountain is. Amen. Caleb didn't complain, but when the time was right, he went back to the commander and he said, Joshua, give me this mountain. Because now God is ready to move. God is ready to move among his people. Are you ready to let God move? Are you willing to let God use you? Are you going to sit back and say, let somebody else do it? God called you. <clears throat> because he wants you to do it. You see, in everything that we do, we have to give an answer to the Almighty. Amen. God don't call you to do something that you know you cannot do. Yes, we make excuses. Remember when God called Jeremiah? He said, I'm just a child. I can't speak. But the Lord said, before you were born, I know who you are. You know King Tammy, God knows who you are. He knows what you can do. And it's time that we take responsibility and let the Almighty God move in your life. Amen. And to see His work go forward. You are His hands. You are His feet. Let's do it together. Because God is able. See, for whatever is born of God to overcome the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Caleb demonstrate his faith in God. What about you? What about you? When you read that story, you got to ask yourself the question, how could Caleb expect to defeat these giants that bring such fear upon God's people before? That caused them to wander for 40 years in the wilderness. And now here I am at 85. The city are still fortified. The giants are still there. And even now, I'm much older. And even now, the army is even smaller, maybe go bigger. But it's faith in God that He is the same God, and He promised to give them the land of Canaan. Amen. God promised to us today that He will deliver us. Amen. His promise is still, is still sure. So I'm saying to you and I today, my brother, my sister, let's move together in God in the first and to know that we can conquer this city and souls can come to glorify God right here. Amen. Amen. But God wants to see first our commitment to Him. We have to be like Caleb. Where is our faith? Let faith demonstrate in who we put our trust. Our trust is not in what man can do, but our trust in what God can do. Amen. And because we know that God is victorious, we can be victorious. Amen. Because we have to understand, if God is the one that gives us the health and strength to achieve what we can, and I say, with God working with me, I can do greater things. Yes. And therefore, whatever your mountain, put it in the hands of God. He will remove that mountain. Amen. He will remove that mountain. Have no fear. Because the God of heaven and earth still rule today. Is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Amen. His promises are sure. Trust Him. And watch Him work. Because God is always at your right hand. Always ready to give a helping hand. All you have to do is to call. He said, if you call, I will answer. What promise? But you see the problem, God's people don't call. 
We call to everybody else and tell everybody else what to do instead of talk to the I am. Remember when Moses asked, who should I say send me? He said, I am that I am. I've said, he is the same today. Yes. So have no fear. Trust in him. And he will move that mountain. Yes. Let us be the Caleb of today. Because the world is in a sad state. Yes. Leaders today have no moral standard. It's like everything go. But the God of heaven and earth still have a people that will stand firm upon thus, said the Lord. And my encouragement to one and all today, let us be the Caleb of today. Amen. Let our faith demonstrate in who we believe. Let our faith demonstrate that no matter what the giant is, God can remove it. Amen. And with God at your side, we can conquer. God bless you. Amen. Amen.